I think um, outside of uh, the commitment that I have to our social foundation Swades, I think uh, in about 10 days after I moved out of media and entertainment, I think I realized that I'm much more a doer and an entrepreneur and not necessarily a mentor and an investor. And therefore for me, starting ground up businesses was critical and important. I think the only different part in this second innings is much more my focus to want to look at doing something that has a core sense of having co-founders. Um, when I looked at the different sectors, I looked at what my strengths are and my learnings over the last 20 years. And I think if I were to sum up a few of them, one of them would be a, a sort of a strong and innate understanding of the consumer or the audience, depending on which, whether it's a product or whether it's a service, and sort of preempting trends overall as you go forward. The second is my obsession towards scale and building large organizations and building them from ground upwards. Uh, obviously with a strong element of team building along that comes into that. Third is brand. I think in India people don't think brand that actually adds and becomes a catalyst. So I think these were my criteria. And the fourth to me was impact. That at this stage and age, what is the impact that I want to make when I'm looking at? Because I think media is a highly impact, impactful sector. You, you, you flesh people's minds, you, you impress on people's minds. Uh, so these were the four criteria when I was looking at the sector. Uh, and I would say the fifth factor was just being uh, the ability to be very disruptive, to start trying something completely new. So therefore, when sports came about, what we're doing in Kabaddi was it's a completely brand new game. To take and transform a game or be part of a core team of people that transforms a game was extremely exciting. I mean, in cricket, I would never have been excited because there's so much happening in cricket and it's so well established that one more person trying to do something would never have been the case. What we're doing in football is equally disruptive. What we're starting up with motorsports is going to be very different and is unique. And the same will apply when we get into our esports with gaming. Similarly with education, I think it's such a large sector. It's about a 20, 50 times larger than the media and entertainment sector in India as a potential. But I think there are two or three key challenges which came to me. One, at least 50% of our people in India, when they want to study, can't study because they want to first pursue their professional career. Most people feel they need to work from a very young age for various socio-economic reasons. But that can't be at the cost of education and therefore I felt online is definitely going to do that. Second, if you, even if you go out to invest in a thousand university buildings over the, it'll take 10, 20 years for India. We don't have 10 to 20 years. Therefore, all roads lead back to online. And third, I think there's a distinct shortage of faculty in this country, quality faculty. So if you see some of the larger universities and reputable universities, when they go to the smaller cities, they only have 60% of capacity, which is a waste because you would think education should draw and make 100% capacity. And that's because they've not been able to attract the best faculty. But online, I can get a professor, a high quality teacher uh, to communicate much better and give five hours, six hours of his month and yet available to 10,000 students. So if I take all of that, I think it was a very scalable, brandable, credibility business, disruptive process in education. And I think in media, you know, being out of it now for almost three and a half, closing up, up to four years, I felt if there was something that I wanted to do again, which was impactful, it would be in the digital space. And that's why Array came about. So I think that's Upgrad, there's U Sports, and there's uh, Array. You know, I think the league definitely, I would say that most people were expecting it to be successful, but maybe over a one year, two year period. So I think the surprise success was that it happened in the first season. Uh, and there were some distinct reasons for that, because you take a massive sport like that, in that 40 minutes of the game, it's a, it's a very sharp game, in 40 minutes, it's action packed. It's gladiators, it's like action, Bollywood style in many ways, it's gladiators, and yet it's a sport. And if, if you put all of those three together, and then you make the men even look slightly hot, put them on a map, add a lot of glamour, and what Star has done to make the coverage absolutely brilliant and take the sport to the next level in terms of promotion, you put all those factors together, I think it's been great. And I think now from here onwards, the, it's, this is the first league that will have two different seasons every year. No league has two seasons in a year. So obviously it talks about the success, but it also talks about keeping it in people's mind. Because while cricket, you can have a league for one year, I mean for what, two months in a year, it's also played the balance 10 months of the year. But if you have a league like Kabaddi for one, only one and a half months and gets forgotten for the balance 10 and a half months, then the impact is lost. 
So the next big step is to have two seasons, which have already been announced. Therefore, we just finished one in August of 2015, and the next one is in the end of January 2016, and then again will be July 2016, and so on. Um, I think over a period of time, and I'm not a spokesperson for the league owners or for the for the uh, for Mashal and the league owners, but I think expanding the team from the present eight to 12 and 16 would be the right way to go because then you get a lot more states, a lot more cities in which it's getting played for. The third, I think, is venues. We have a big challenge in t terms of the fact that we need at least 10,000 people venues. We don't need the 50,000 people venues because Kabaddi is a little bit of a personal sport. You won't enjoy the game if you're that far back. So it can never be a stadium sports like football is and cricket is, but it can't be only 1,000 people. So I think the investment into infrastructure is going to take place. Fourth, I think advertisers and sponsors need to really get that. But I think the audiences are way before everybody else. And that's always great. Clearly, as far as Ubamba is concerned, I think our first focus has been teamwork. And I think, you know, we're the only team that's come in the finals both season and won one of the seasons. So I think that's a good starting track record. But, you know, it's sports. Anything can happen next. But we are very, very focused on the teamwork. So from day one, I think we've kept a strong team. We've nurtured. We've all grown together from that point of view. And I think even in the season three, uh, we will see that we're the only team with a full same team of season two. Most of the other teams are going to go through some sense of change if I read what I read um, with the information that's been given to us. So that's been our primary focus. Second, we're constantly evolving and uh, looking for new talent. So I think our sort of future stars program and on the ground activity, Pan India, where we're looking for the next big stars of Kabaddi and the young stars is something that puts us as an edge. Uh, sponsorship wise, I think we're definitely looking at a 3x, 4x jump. So, you know, I think the, f the first season we had, uh, the second season we had eight sponsors. Uh, and this season coming out in Jan 2016, we're looking at 15 sponsors. Um, yes, there's been a fair amount of interest. I think there seems to be still the perception problem with advertisers, absolutely wrongly so, that Kabaddi's is mass sport. Whereas actually it's as much being watched in urban cities. The kids have taken for it. It's the only sport with 30% female viewership compared to cricket or football. So obviously, it's hitting the high points in the top of the pyramid sector also. Now, all advertisers take one to two years, three years. They're always behind the trends for anything that happens, frankly. They moved, you know, they, they lost the digital plot. They lost the, the, you know, the new media plot. And I think to that extent, it'll take them. Now, maybe 50% is just their convenience of not facing up to it because then they have to pay the right rates for what they want to do. I think 50% is they're just beyond the time, behind the times. Uh, so that's a process that we will go out there and pitch and educate. But I think we're quite clear that if you look at where uh, IPL is pegged and where ISL and the Football League is pegged, Kabaddi can't be... We are, we are the number two sport in the country. There's no question about that. Now, there might be some uh, media dispute on the fact is football number two or Kabaddi number two, but any rating agency will tell you that our ratings are 1.8 times that of football at any given stage during the matches. And that's really what counts. So if a sport is higher than football, why should it get one-fourth the rates of football? And I think that's pretty much our take-it-or-leave-it approach when it comes to advertisers, which we're doing right now. No, so there are two seasons, I'm saying. So, yeah, yeah, two seasons. At, uh, so two seasons in one year, I think, is the way to go, primarily because we need to be an audience. You can't build a sport unless uh, uh, with a one-and-a-half-month play window. However, I think in, in all leagues around the world are for six to seven months to eight months. Nobody realizes that. But when you're looking at EPL, you're looking at anything else. So even the basketball in the US or whatever you look at, or soccer or, or rugby, they are six to eight month leagues. No league. We are the only country in the world that has created a league which is only six weeks. Now, the viewership pattern, the benchmark could be that, you know, you take a three month sport and the sort of, there's a U effect and interest sags and then starts coming up again. That's why we've broken up into two different six-week leagues. And it's an action sport. So I think it's the absolute right way to go. So I think in sports, we're definitely looking at these four sports, which is Kabaddi, football, moto, which is biking, and e-gaming, uh, e-sports, e which is gaming. Um, I think while in Kabaddi, our participation is as a team owner, I think in the other three, we want to be at the top end of the value chain, clearly. 
Football, I think we're doing something not been done by anyone in India, even if I say so myself. Because I think the crux is we need to get to the grassroots level. And I know there are a lot of people already investing into the grassroots level. But the differentiator for us is you can't do six weeks, six month courses with kids. Firstly, you need to catch them very young. So our entire initiative is for the under 12, under 14 and under 16 age group. Second is we, we pamper our kids in India. All of us get pampered. We've all got pampered and now everyone else gets pampered. And you know, you cannot work with a disciplined sport to become a sporting champion if you're in a pampered environment. And therefore, we were very clear we wanted to move this out and send them to the right venue. And therefore, we've tied up with the Bundesliga and are sending between 60, about 50 to 60 kids every year um, under 12, 14 and 16 to Germany for six years of training. Okay. And that's, to me, the six years and outside of the uh, country is most important. And I think our biggest challenge is not really to tie up with Bundesliga, which was obviously a challenge, or to select the kids, but to convert the parents' mindset. Because I think today we're not a sporting nation DNA. So for a lot of people and parents, they don't feel it's a good career option or an aspirational career option for their kid or their son, as the case may be, to become a sports person and to become a sports star. So that has to change. And I think we're doing a fair amount of this thing. But the bottom line is, we're sending these kids for six years of training and then we will manage their career thereafter. So it's not a social project, but it's going to be a 10 year view that we've taken on football as a sport. Six years, they're going to be there fully and training. And the brilliant part is that when you get to that level of discipline, that means every weekend you're playing game with peers because they'll train during the week in those. In, uh, uh, right now it's half an hour and then we'll go to Wolfsburg and some of the others. But the key part is the games they play on weekends are with people at a peer level, which will only help them to get better and better with every passing day. And when you're seeing sport at that level, you know, your brain has to change, your heart has to change, your running has to change, your entire competitive spirit has to change. We are sending teachers from here so they continue with the ICSE course because otherwise it'll be a challenge. But we're also teaching them three European languages because I strongly also do believe that sports stars need to be great communicators. So if you really want to be an incredible uh, uh, individual and that level of confidence, you need to speak multiple languages. And we want all our Indian players to play in Europe. And for that, they need to know multiple languages. So we can always have done that six years later. But day one, we're doing parallel coaching. We're doing parallel uh, educational curriculum continues and foreign language. I don't have a strong view on whether the ISL or I-League will uh, should or could merge. Um, primarily because I think there are a couple of challenges. The logical step would be if you've got a very limited talent base, it should all come together. On the flip side, the people who run I-Leagues have invested a lot of money over the last 10 years. So they have to show something for it rather than just a trade-off and a flip-off into a principle. Um, they, didn't have the, they didn't have what I would call the benefit of television which would have taken the I-League to a different level. And ISL has, has managed to do both of that and is therefore popularity-wise has gained. So I think it's a fine line. I think people will have to sit down across the table and find solutions for that. And I think it's up to the association to take an overall view and stand. You know, having said that, everywhere in the world where sports happens, multiple leagues do continue. So it's not like the Ranji Trophy here in cricket is, is, is extinct because of ISL or IPL in the case maybe. Uh, so. It's a it's a it's a it's something to be pondered over. I don't have a evolved view on that.